Hello, everybody, and welcome to my video. Um, this is uh, going to law school versus becoming versus a CPA versus. So I usually will give a disclaimer when I do a video like this. And so I'll give my disclaimer verbally. Um, this video is for educational purposes only. These are my opinions, not the opinions of the South Orange County Community College District or any of the companies where I serve as a board member of. And um, why am I making this video? Uh, literally in the last few weeks, and I think this may have been more of a result of the pandemic, but I've had several different students reach out to me and ask me, hey, Tchaikovsky, should I go to law school? And so, um, which is great, um, but I think that what I would want my, a student of mine to do uh, prior to going to law school is to really, really think it through. And the reason why is that law school is very expensive. And it's something that is very expensive. Going to Harvard Law School, um, 100,000 a year, okay? If it's over three years, that is going to be roughly about um, $300,000. And that is after tax dollars. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you go and start working, say, at a accounting for a law firm, and say if you're making around 300,000 per year, Okay, if you're making 300,000 a year and say if it's in New York, okay, or even California, you're gonna lose about half of that to taxes. So my pre-tax income is here. My taxes are gonna be right about here. So my after-tax income is gonna be about $150,000. When you think about this, okay, if I am trying to pay off my debt as quickly as possible. And we're not even getting into living. So if you say like living expenses are gonna be roughly, you're gonna need a nice car, you're gonna need nice clothes, you need a lot of really like nice things, but say if you can get that out for maybe like, I don't know, like 60 grand a year, you're still, it's gonna take you, you're not gonna have a lot of disposable income left to be going through and to then, um, and by the way, getting one of these jobs is very hard to do. A lot of people are making about a hundred grand when they graduate from law school. This is, if you're going to a top tier law school, if you're working as a district attorney, you can see the salary. So it's really important for you before considering law school is to really think about the type of job that you want, how much that is and how much that is gonna pay because if you're going to a law school that is really expensive, it's gonna be a lot of money to pay off. But at the same time, it is a great education and I'll kind of get that into that for like a little bit. And I've made this video is really geared towards CPAs who are thinking about attending law school, meaning that you have your CPA already, you're thinking about attending law school, but a lot of this will be applicable to those of you who are just kind of thinking about going to law school. Okay, so about me. So I am a licensed California attorney and I'm also a licensed certified public accountant in the state of California. I was a business economics major at UC Santa Barbara. While, while I was at UC Santa Barbara, I worked as an intern for Coopers and Librand. Now, if you haven't heard of that, that's now called Price Waterhouse Coopers. So I worked for two years at uh, PwC. I worked in audit. I got my CPA license in August of 1993. I started law school basically at the same time. And for the first year and a half I was in law school, I worked full time. So I got a job as a internal auditor in up in LA. And then I went to law school at night. I went to, when I was there, it was called Southwestern University School of Law. It's now just called Southwestern Law School. So you've had many illustrious alumni, including uh, Larry H. Parker. I always joke with my students that I can't get you to 2.1 million, 
uh, Donald Sterling, who's probably the biggest scumbag MBA owner out there. Um, who else went to my law school? Uh, Marsha Clark. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. No, not the Brady Bunch Marsha, but the OJ Marsha. So we've had some interesting people go through. I did get a OJ photo autographed while I was there, which was kind of cool by Chris Darden. So that was pretty sweet. Um, but my last two years I was in law school, I went full time just because I wanted to get it out of the way. And I was literally a zombie while I was in my law, in law school, those that first year and a half. So I graduated from law school in December of 96. I passed the February 1997 bar exam. And then I became a licensed attorney sometime in June or July of 1997. I worked and after I got out of law school, I was kind of like, not in limbo, but it was really hard for me because I decided that I really liked accounting more than I liked law. So I didn't, because I did, when I was in law school, I did work for a law firm, but I just looked at it and said, this is really not for me. And so I decided to go into accounting. And what I realized about accounting is that I really liked accounting, but I didn't like working at a big four. And it was just, it's a matter of preference. And I have other videos that are, that kind of talk about that. But for me, I didn't like the big four accounting firm just because it just wasn't the right, um, it just wasn't the right thing for me. And everybody has like their own preferences. Had I, if I could go back and change things, I would. And that's why I've written many articles about it. So do you need to become an attorney? And the thing I would tell you is that, and this is what I tell for my, my accounting students right now, or my, my, uh, the students that are in my accounting classes, is what type of job do you want? And you almost kind of want to start looking at that end game or that end goal, because then it's going to help you work to that goal. And, you know, it's really something that do you need to become a lawyer? And I can tell you, like, so most attorneys that I know are not happy. Um, they work a lot of hours. Um, I mean, everybody works a lot, but attorneys tend to work a lot of hours. Very, very few attorneys that I know are truly happy with what they do, some more than others. Um, judges, a lot of people start in law and then they get out of it. And then they kind of say, you know, I'm done with going to the downtown office and doing all that other kind of stuff. And when you look at it in terms of uh, who are the happiest, like judges, public defenders, prosecutors, they have a really fulfilling role. And it's really because their end goal is not victory. Their goal is to seek justice. What's the best outcome? I mean, how do we seek justice? And that's a very different type of job than if I'm representing a client that I know is guilty. Try living with yourself on that. If I know somebody who you know, committed murder, if I know somebody who abused a child, is that something I could really live with myself and giving them fair representation? And that's generally why for myself, I never really practice as an attorney. So it's a three-year investment. You're going to be getting into, as I said, $300,000 probably in debt, and that is after tax. Why do I say that always? Meaning that you're going to probably have to make double that to pay it back, and you have to pay for a living and other things like that. If you are an accountant and you want to teach, I generally recommend for you to get a PhD just because in accounting, I, that's, if you want to teach, that's probably going to be the better thing to do. Um, I personally think that the JD is more relevant. However, as a JD, I, what's very cool about teaching at Irvine Valley College or any community college is that I can get tenure and I can also be at the very top of the pay scale because the community colleges consider a Juris Doctorate to be like a doctorate. So that's great, but a four-year school, no, they won't consider it like that. If you are a CPA and you need something else, oftentimes if you're in tax, and this is really a lot of times where becoming an attorney, this is really if you're gonna go into taxation, but I would say for tax, that's really when you get like a master's in taxation. Taxation in terms of accounting has its own complete like subset 
just have fun and go to New York University, type in LLM classes at NYU. And that means a master's of law in taxation. You're going to find about 150 classes there. It is insane the number of classes that they have. So that's something I would kind of say in terms of for tax. Um, it does, it can be a little bit more meaningful. But again, if you can get a master's in taxation, that might be okay. If you're in business or assurance, um, MBA, master's in data science, and really going beyond a CPA is really something that it has its benefits. And I can tell you uh, for myself, um, going, you know, looking at my own journey, I became an interim CFO for a publicly traded company, a NASDAQ listed company at the age of 31. Now <laughs> I say interim, it was kind of like, okay, dude, can you do this job? It's like, yeah, but it's one of those things where if you have the degree, if you have both degrees, if you have both a CPA and an attorney, it's just going to open up a lot more areas for you to be successful in. Okay. So, um, but before you go to law school, one of the things I really recommend to my students is to get some real world experience first. And this is really for any type of grad school is because if you go directly from undergraduate to a graduate program, and it's really more in the professional areas, you're just not gonna have the same perspective as someone who is in business. And so what I would really recommend to you is to, before going to law school, get some real world experience. I was just helping out one of my students the other day. She had worked at a marketing firm and now she wants to go to law school, which I think is great because it really solidified the reason why she wanted to go through and to do it. I think she re regrets not becoming a CPA, but I give her a hard time about that, but that's okay. Um, now, the reason why I recommend students to go to become a CPA is not because they're gonna enjoy it because it's not necessarily the most enjoyable job, but it is a great business base for anything that you do. And as a student, the thing to really think about is what am I going to do once I graduate? And you end up getting in these different jobs, which just seem to be like a total rut. A, a, biz, a general business degree, one of the problems is, is it doesn't have specific, uh, it's not specific. I was gonna try to say a fancy word like specificity. Yeah serendipity, specificity. Um, it's not specific enough. And that's really why accounting is great because you're gonna work for one of these firms, you're gonna make about 65,000, sometimes 70 grand a year. You're gonna get great experience. And that's really the important thing is that you wanna get the experience. You're gonna get a name of an accounting firm on your resume. Um, and as long as you're not Madoff's accountant, it's gonna be great. So it's a great license to get first. And it's also too, I can, I can, what's really funny is that I went to a, a ter not a, it wasn't a terrible law school, but I went to a law school where it's like, <laughs> I had an employer tell me, it's like, I was working, I got a, I got a part-time job at this pretty decent law firm. And I asked the person from HR, I said, Hey, I go, can I get a job here? And she's all where did you go to law school? I go, well, I'm going to Southwestern Law School. She said, no. And I said, well, the, then she found out who I was working with. And then she found out that I was a CPA. And she said, well, maybe the partner can pull some strings. So the one thing is about if you are a CPA and an attorney, and there's this movie called The Untouchables and like that came out like in 1987. And I know that was probably like decades before all of you were born. But when that movie came out, there was somebody claiming to be a treasury agent. And I love the line because Sean Connery basically said, well, you must be that because who else would claim to be that person? And so as a CPA and an attorney, it's instant credibility. So it's having both of those licenses because you have to pass both those exams, which are awful. Um, and that's really the other thing too, is that by taking becoming a CPA first, prior to going to law school, you're going to get 
an amazing thing in terms of taking prior to taking the bar exam. My anxiety was significant. I still had anxiety about taking the bar exam, but um, having passed the CPA exam first, going to the bar exam, it's like, oh, dude, this is totally easy. It's not that it was totally easy. It's just, it's, it's wasn't, I didn't have the same anxiety as someone who's never taken an exam like that before. Now, the other thing too, is that if you decide to become a CPA, you also have to know is that there are parts of the law where your accounting background will give you a significant advantage over non-CPAs. And those are things like family law. If you're doing divorces, and you have to know financial statements. And it's very, very important that you do know how to do that bankruptcy, anything corporate and securities litigation, taxation in, in pretty much numbers touch almost every single part of the law. And what's, what's crazy is you get in law school, you get all these poli sci majors and you're gonna get blown out as a student in terms of taking constitutional law criminal procedure, torts, all that stuff. But when it comes then to when you then take, uh, when you're practicing, that's when that accounting backgrounds are really going to kind of come into play. And if you have some real world experience, guess what? A lot of your classmates don't. So that's another reason why having that accounting background is going to be giving you a significant advantage over non-CPAs. So Again, my suggested pathway to you, get the work experience, CPA license first. Go to the best law school possible for the least amount of money, okay? What's gonna determine the law school you get into? It's your LSAT and your, L, your grades, okay? Um, the other thing I would also do too, and this is, I'm not promoting Irvine Valley, but I had the pleasure of doing an instructional observation of a paralegal instructor. And this is probably about, about a year and a half ago. And Irvine Valley has an instructor. His name is Renato Izquieta. And this dude is like, I was like sitting in his class and I'm like going, oh my God, this guy knows how to teach civil procedure. It was insane. I go, I finally understand it. <laughs> it was like in an hour, it was like going, oh my God, this is amazing. But you wanna take some courses with either him or fines, because there's actually some really, really good, I mean, I would actually take paralegal classes. And the reason why is that that's gonna teach you the real functionality of the law in terms of what you do once you get to the law firm. And that's gonna give you a pretty huge advantage. So those paralegal type courses, I think before you get into law school, I think that's gonna give you some really, really good, um, really good insights. Um, different schools giving you different opportunities. Okay, so here, here's the big deal, okay, is that when you are going to law school, is that Southwestern or USC graduates only really want to hire USC students. Now, that may be changing, um, especially now with a lot of the different social things going on, but generally, they only want to hire their own. And that's why you need to go to the best school you can possibly get into. The other thing I would say as well is that my student who I was taught, who was considering going to law school, um, her sister graduated from a lower level law school and she is now working doing insurance defense. And if you're working, if you go to one of these lower level law schools, a lot of doors are going to be closed to you and you're gonna to have to fight your way through them. And her sister is doing insurance defense. And I can tell you right now, that is not the most glamorous part of the law. And, you know, and again, it's, it's one of those things that where you go to school is largely gonna be determining the opportunities that you have. And it's just because those graduates like to hire their own. And you wanna do your own research on this and don't take what I'm saying is absolute letter of the law, but you really, really need to do this because if you go to, if you wanna work 
at a large law firm and you go to a law school that's like ranked at the bottom of the fifth and that's not the bottom of an alcohol bottle it's rather it's a bottom tier your opportunities are not going to nearly be as good as if you're going to a better law school but in terms of the pro sides your writing if you do go to law school your writing is going to become phenomenal. I became an amazing writer because of law school. I thought I was a decent writer before, but it wasn't until law school. It's like, wow, I had a professor who tore apart my writing and it was the best thing ever. You're also going to be thinking differently. You're not going to look at a situation the same way. And one of the things that happened to me when I, when I first got a job as an assistant controller there was a situation where the company was given equipment in lieu of money and the CFO wanted money. So I said, why don't we take that equipment and go to one of our investors who does, uh, let's do a sale lease back. And so what happened was we got that used equipment. We then sold it to that, um, to that partner and then we leased it back to ourselves and we pulled, I think it was about $2 million out of the transaction. And so when you look at that, could I have thought about that as an accountant before? No way. When you are going to law school, you learn how to dissect a situation. You have to learn how to look at a problem from every single possible angle. As an attorney, you are a problem solver and you need to solve the problems within the scope of the law, but that's really what you're doing. And the other part in two is that for some types of corporate positions, you may need the advanced degree. For myself as a CFO, I think it really helped that I had both the CPA and the JD, and it's just because I made my securities attorney's life that much easier because I knew how to file the 10Ks and 10Qs after they properly trained me. So, you know, with the CPA attorney background, you're going to be bringing in a completely different perspective. And it's just because most attorneys are afraid of numbers. Okay. So here are just some things to kind of sum it up. Great things. Why do it? Great education, better opportunities, different perspective of situations. Against it. You need to, if you're not attending a top tier law school, your opportunities are going to be bad, not as good. Debt. I mean, just that's really what I worry about the most. But if our, if our dollar devalues and there's no inflationary cause, it might not be a bad thing. So it's just, you've got to consider the debt. Also too, make sure you know the type of job you're going to be doing. If you're going to have to compromise yourself ethically, it may not really be what you want to be doing. And that's really the problem. And I can also tell you too, is working at a law firm first is gonna give you a much better perspective on things. Take those paralegal classes, work at a law firm first. The last thing I'm gonna mention here applies to both accounting and to the legal field and to a lot of medical things. The one thing that all of you are gonna to have to realize is that artificial intelligence and automation have been here and they're coming here and they're coming quickly. Go on YouTube and look at automation and attorneys. You will see that there's guys who create or there's people that have created software that can do a contract review in the same time it would take a legal professional to do it. Now, what I see with this AI is that it's going to be useful in terms of doing an initial pass, and then you'll need attorneys to kind of sort through some different things, but it is significantly changing the profession. And that's something that you really, really, really want to be going through and considering. So again, automation, artificial intelligence, depending on the type of law you're getting into, that's going to have a significant impact on what you're going to be doing. So the last thing I want to say is that when it comes to academics and your, you know, what determines success. And so I graduated, so it's now right now, 2021, I graduated from my UC Santa Barbara in August of 1991. 
and knowing the people that I know. It is not about the top performers in law school or in the accounting classes. It's not who got the best score on the CPA exam. Nothing to do with that. It is really those people who have like, they're, they're driven to make deals. And when you look at any partner at an accounting firm, it's real, or even a law firm, it's not about were they on law review. It's about can they get the business. As you go through the ranks of an accounting firm, and I've done some videos on this in the past, and I've written some articles on it, but what ends up happening is that, well, you know how to do the law, you know how to do those things, but can you go out and sell it to people? And that's really what is going to be, uh, going to be giving you like, that's really what is going to be, um, you know, that's really what's going to be making the difference is what's your drive. And it's something that it's not about the grades. It's really about, are you driven to be successful? Do you have the social skills? Are you motivated? Can you go out and get that business? That is what is going to make you different than everybody else. And that's just always, I think in anything you do, that's really what it is. For myself, I'm extremely passionate about um, accounting, but it's really more from the teaching side. But I really, what I enjoy more is helping my students succeed. And it's kind of cool now that I've been teaching for about, it was about my eighth year teaching. Watching my former students success gives me the best feelings possible because that's why I'm doing this. It's like, I, I love to teach accounting and trying to make it as easy as possible to understand, but it's really about my student success is really where I want to be. That's how I measure kind of my, my own success. So with that being said, so I want to thank you for joining me here today. If you have questions, please, please feel free to email me or leave a comment down below. And I want to thank you for liking and subscribing. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers just so I can brag to my kids that, hey, I'm at a thousand. So uh, thank you for liking and subscribing. And I greatly appreciate your time today. So have a great one. Take care. Bye-bye.